Hey, it's Sol, and it has been one month since the launch of Dragonflight. But with the season started, and the race to world first over, and the economy settling in, it is, well, I think it's now time, a good time, a great time, to create a more up-to-date set of guidelines to getting started with professions and dragon flights for newer players or alt characters based on what I've been learning over the past month. Now, this is a pretty general guide and I'm not gonna get into the super, super specifics, but you should feel confident in your choices by the end of this video, I hope. So if you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe for more WoW content and yada, yada, yada. And let's get started with gathering professions. In this more matured economy, resources are both high in demand and plentiful. Experienced gatherers can collect materials like super, super fast. Even while mounted, it's, it's pretty crazy. And I've been loving it so far. Early in Dragonflight, the idea was to gather like as much as you could as fast as you could because everything was selling at ridiculously high prices. Remember, this was a new market we were getting into and well, that sort of thing is pretty normal. These days though, basic materials have gone down in price by quite a bit. Now, of course, they're still worth money and they get sucked up by the regional auction house super, super quick, which is great. But your approach here is going to be a little bit different after one month of Dragonflight. So I advise the new generation of gatherers to invest their specialization points into mastering the elements. It's a tree that focuses on elementally infused versions of herb and ore nodes. You get this special ability to overload these nodes for elemental reagents, which are pretty valuable and are needed in most profession recipes, so they're always gonna move. The build that you want to make starts off by learning each of the four elemental branches one at a time. So pump a few points into the base trade up here until you can choose a subspec and then choose order as your first element to kind of sort of master. Progress here until you unlock the trait that basically reduces the cooldown of your overload ability. And then repeat the process. More points into the base trait followed by unlocking the next subspec and repeating that process until you're done. For mining, you want to start with Order, followed by Hardened, Primal, and then Molten. For Herbalism, you want to choose Order again, followed by Windswept, Frigid, and then Decayed. The goal as a gather is to overload these Titan Touch nodes as much as possible. That's what's going to get you the Order element. It's the most valuable of them all by far. In practice though, you're gonna be overloading order and then you're gonna focus on farming up any of the other elemental nodes because they give you the most bang for your buck. That's what you're specializing in. But it is going to interest you to at least farm up regular mining and herb nodes to lower the cooldown of your overload ability. Now, once you've gotten this far, you're gonna have a pretty good idea on what you want to specialize in next. A popular pick would be to go for gathering while mounted, for example. Herbalists may consider specking into Wraithbark as it's the most valuable of the four herbs. Miners can go all in with trying to find rare materials wherever they can in hopes of getting Kazgarite. It's another ore that sells for quite a bit. And I know I haven't really talked about skinning because it's not really my thing, but specking here is pretty easy too. You just want to start with harvesting and then move to trophy collector to get a good boost to finding rare materials and then focus on being, I guess, an all-rounder. Gathering in general, it, it's just super easy. And between dragon riding and specializations, it's pretty fun to do. In fact, I've had the most fun gathering here than, well, pretty much that I've ever had. And it's gonna feel super badass to fully max out all of the gathering trees and be this unstoppable collector of materials. Now, if you're not particularly attached to your personal professions and you just wanna make gold, then gathering is the safe choice. It's stress-free, it's fulfilling. You just spend an hour or so hopping around the Dragon Isles and you sell your goods almost instantly for like tens of thousands of gold. And that's kind of it. You could walk away from this video if you want to right now and be fine. Stay safe, stay healthy, etc. But crafting professions are a different beast altogether. And the approach for your new crafter is not going to be as easy. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat here. Mistakes can be made. The advice that I give you here, it could lead you down the wrong path and I'll feel bad. Your mileage will vary based on your personal play style, uh, your region and your realm. Whatever you do decide to specialize in, in crafting professions, don't deviate. That's like the golden rule. Once you've made a decision, you've got to mentally lock yourself into it. Being a hybrid crafter before you've finished one thing or another, it's not gonna do you any favors. Don't just learn how to make like a few epic weapons, 
uh, you know, at, at a minimum, and then decide, oh, I want to get into making alloy. You want to decide on one weapon and then fully max out that subspecialization and then choose specializations that make you better at that weapon still, followed by increasing your inspiration. It's, that's the chance to make your crafts to be made with a higher skill level. And well, the current flavor of the market actually is called, or I call it the inspiration meta, where a specialized crafter can easily create items close, not quite max rank, but close to max rank with relatively cheap, low rank materials. But with inspiration, they've got like anywhere between a 30 and 40% chance to make it at max rank. Players will then basically play the RNG game crafting and recrafting items until they get their desired result. With current market prices, it's just cheaper to go this route than to use max rank materials. I mean, there's sort of a different process there and I'm not going to get into it because really it's just not a great idea with the way current prices are. But the inspiration route is also the fastest way to become competitive at making good gear like the big boys and girls. Consumables like potions and enchants on the other hand, well, you don't get second chances at those, but the approach isn't any different. You want to specialize in a straight, straight line. Max up your skill with that particular thing and everything around it, then inspiration, and then you'll be able to use lower quality materials in hopes of an inspiration proc. For the crafter who isn't finding success in public orders or trade chat, I would suggest specializing in high traffic goods that are sellable in the auction house. So for gear crafters, you know, like blacksmithing, engineering, uh, and so on and so forth, that's going to mean parts. With the current inspiration meta, the majority of parts being used aren't rank threes, but rank twos, which are very accessible. So I would suggest going all in with a multi-craft focus. The higher, the better. Now keep in mind that going multi-craft means playing the long game. You're gonna have your good days with tons of procs, and you're gonna have your bad days with no procs, but in the end, you'll be making steady profit. Also, you want to keep an eye on your realm's market for basic profession gear. More people like you are rolling fresh characters and professions, and some of them try not to be, but some of them are being lazy enough to buy profession gear at like five grand a piece when it only takes like a few hundred gold to craft at most. There's a little lecture incoming, so, so please bear with me here, but being a crafter in Dragonflight means, well, you're role playing a crafter. You're playing the part of a citizen of Azeroth with a profession. I guess in other words, I'm just telling you that this is a job. To find success, you're gonna have to hustle. You're gonna have to bark in trade chat with what you've got to offer. You've got to like pay attention to what people are asking for in trade chat. And also you've got to camp the crafting table hard for those public orders. In most realms, Public orders have either dried up or they never even took off because most of the crafters who want to use them, they don't have very high skills and either can't or won't participate in the hustle and bustle of trade chat. Now, if you couple that with potential clients who would rather not have low quality gear or items made for them when rank three or four pieces are pretty accessible by just asking around, you got a bit of a problem there. The popular refrain of asking for minimum quality on public orders, sure, that works for clients and the more established, the pre-established crafting community, but pretty much cuts off newer crafters from being able to participate. That's you, by the way. And the inspiration meta is still the cheaper route to go. The discussions around this are loud and ongoing, and for now, we're going to leave it at that. But what if you're not crafting for profit? Per se. What if you're just trying to max out your profession to make cool items for yourself? Or I guess what if your character is stuck too? Most professions will have two available branches to spec into when their profession skill hits around 50. Now a good number of folks are kind of stuck right now and they can't reach the other milestones of 75 and 100 which open up the rest of the profession trees. There's kind of a solution for that. It's definitely not ideal, but here it goes. Just recraft your own epic gear. Now, recrafting has a chance to give a skill point. It's just a chance, though. The cost of going down this route is extremely high, even higher depending on your profession. Like, for example, blacksmiths can recraft with just a bit of cheap alloy. Cool. Engineers, on the other hand, they're gonna suffer, needing like thousands and thousands of gold's worth of mats for just a chance at a skill point. 
And that's why it's very, very, very important for you to stick fully into a specialization that you can feel confident that you'll be happy with when you're done. Regardless of our feelings or principles when it comes to the way professions are, that's the state of it right now and the market that's been built around it. So if you got any more specific questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. And I invite other folks to offer their expertise too, because we're, you know, we're all just trying to help each other out. I hope that this was helpful. And if so, hit the like button, subscribe for more wow content, and I will catch you later. Good luck out there, folks. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Mm -hmm.